If you are a business owner or facility manager and you want to save money, then this is for you. If you're an electrical contractor and want to learn about a lucrative new service, it's for you too. We're going to show you where you're likely to be wasting energy and how much. And we'll show you how to identify, locate and resolve the various issues and make big savings. Now, if saving money or earning more cash with a bit of Planet Rescue thrown in is of no interest to you, then you may as well move on. You won't enjoy this. The electricity consumption in the UK rose from 192 terawatt hours in 1970 to 301 terawatt hours in 2017, and that's a lot. Our future energy needs are open for debate, but all four scenarios currently being considered by National Grid will require us to create more generating capacity and, as importantly, use less electricity. And to put the numbers into perspective, the predicted additional capacity requirement just for electric cars by the year 2030 is between 3.5 and 8 gigawatts. And that's on top of the existing peak demand of 60 gigawatts. Now, by comparison, Hinkley Point C, the nuclear plant in Somerset, will add just 3.2 gigawatts of capacity to the system. So adding more is a big problem. It's clear the wiser way to go is reducing our electrical consumption. And the only way to do that is to improve our energy efficiency. Now, it is perhaps not surprising that nearly half the UK's electrical energy is used by industrial and commercial consumers. This amounted to 166 terawatt hours in 2017. It stands to reason, therefore, that any improvements in their efficiency could dramatically reduce our required generation. A saving of just 10% would amount to 16.6 terawatt hours, which is roughly equal to all of the energy generated by the UK's five remaining coal-fired power stations in 2018. From another angle, it equals nearly a third of the UK's entire wind farm generation output of 2018. To push businesses to become more efficient and to help us to meet our future energy needs, the UK has two items of legislation. ESOS is a mandatory energy assessment scheme for organisations in the UK that meet the qualification criteria. And SECR, the UK government's streamlined energy and carbon reporting policy, was implemented on the 1st of April 2019. These regulations require an estimated 12,000 companies incorporated in the UK to disclose their energy and carbon emissions. Now, apart from legislation, there are also moral advantages to reducing emissions, which of course also reduces a business's carbon footprint. But while it's good to improve your green credentials and shout about it, for many, the biggest motivator will be the financial savings they can make. Energy is getting more expensive. Renewables are not cheap. And we're all paying for it with every unit of electricity we consume. The UK's wholesale electricity price rose from £19 per megawatt hour in 2003 to £46 per megawatt hour in 2017. So a 10 or 20% reduction in electricity consumption could save some businesses thousands of pounds per month. Reducing electrical energy consumption by 20% or more is easier than you might think. In researching the opportunities available to businesses to reduce their electrical energy consumption, some startling discoveries were made. According to the Carbon Trust, on average, 20% of the electricity consumed in businesses is wasted due to inefficient equipment. A British gas survey of electricity smart meters in 6,000 SMEs showed as much as 46% of electrical energy being consumed out of hours. Research shows, on average, businesses can reduce their electricity consumption by 12% by turning off office equipment at the end of the day. And office equipment left on standby during bank holidays and weekends cost the average SME £6,000 per year. On average, 25% of an organisation's electricity costs come from lighting. Occupancy sensors can reduce this by nearly a third, with daylight sensors offering even greater savings. And LED lighting consumes 80% less power than incandescent lamps for the same light output. Amazingly, studies have shown that 50% of businesses have poor power factor, 
Consuming an additional 30% in unnecessary reactive power due to power factor levels of 0.7 and lower. And that's not to mention the effects of phase imbalance or high harmonic currents. These statistics come from the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy, the Carbon Trust, British Gas and National Grid, and are backed up by genuine research. Now, based on these, it's easy to see how reductions and therefore savings of 20% or more could be achieved. It's worth mentioning at this point that it is possible to reduce electrical energy costs by using one of the many price comparison businesses that are out there. Now, many organisations do this as the savings are easy to see and achieve. But in reality, they may generally only add up to a few percent, and it does nothing to reduce a business's actual electrical consumption or carbon emissions. Consider if your car was only doing 10 miles to the gallon and you noticed it was leaking fuel on the road. Would you fix the problem or ignore it and look for cheaper fuel? Well, you're sure, everyone wants to buy their fuel from the cheapest place, but it would make sense to fix the car first. And it's the same with the electricity a business uses. I mean, by all means, shop around for the best price. But in light of the previous statistics, far greater savings are to be made by fixing the problems. Let's look in more detail at some of those statistics and the more common electrical inefficiency issues. Motors consume around 40% of all electricity used worldwide and account for more than two-thirds of the electricity consumed by industry. Now, their performance degrades over time and, combined with advances in technology over the past few decades, replacing old motors can easily improve efficiency by 20 to 30%. The cost of running a motor for a year can be 10 times what it costs to buy it in the first place and most replacement programs will have a payback time of one to three years. The efficiency of your motor operation is therefore critically important if you're aiming to lower your carbon footprint and reduce your energy bills. And for businesses that think they don't have any motors, what about the heating, ventilation and air conditioning? HVAC can use a huge amount of energy, enough to double a building's energy consumption and associated carbon emissions. How old are the motors pumping the water and blowing the air around your installation? It's also the case that older HVAC systems often operate motors at full speed, using baffles to restrict airflow as required. More modern systems with motors controlled by variable speed drives or VSDs will reduce motor speed instead. And on the basis that a motor running at 80% consumes 50% less electricity than at full speed, this can be another area where large savings are possible. Old IT equipment is another common inefficiency issue in offices, including photocopiers and printers. And there are still a large number of old PCs out there with old cathode ray or CRT displays that have been controlling industrial equipment for decades and still are. But at what cost? An LED monitor can consume four times less energy than its CRT equivalent and often even 25% less than fairly modern LCD displays. With lighting contributing to 25% of the average industrial facility electricity bill, and with office buildings and call centers using even more, the efficiency of lighting equipment and its use is vital. Obvious changes are to move from incandescent lamps to LED, with savings of up to 80%. Less obvious are the effective use of occupancy sensors and daylight saving devices. Occupancy sensors in occasional rooms like meeting rooms, corridors and bathrooms can cut lighting costs by 30% by ensuring areas are only lit when they're in use. And with daylight sensors, adjusting artificial light levels as the sun comes up and goes down during the working day, a business can save a further 40%. Shockingly, 46% of the electrical energy used by UK SMEs is consumed out of hours, according to a survey of 6,000 smart meters. That's nearly half the electricity used by a business. 
One of the most common causes is office lighting left on at night and weekends, something you can often see for yourself as you travel around at night. Similarly, car park lighting. Being outside, it's often overlooked. Car park and other external flood lighting can sometimes offer the greatest cost-saving opportunities. Halogen floodlights can be replaced by LED equivalents, and the use of occupancy and daylight sensors will ensure that no energy is being consumed unnecessarily. Another culprit for out-of-hours electricity use in offices, call centres and classrooms is that of equipment being left on all night and the weekend. This ranges from the obvious PCs, monitors, photocopies and printers to hot water and other vending machines. Disappointingly, 50% of businesses have poor power factor, many as low as 0.7, consuming an additional 30% in unnecessary reactive power. Now, if you don't already know, some electrical equipment requires an amount of reactive power in addition to active power in order to work effectively. These tend to be items with copper windings in them, especially uh, transformers, motors, induction heaters, arc welders, compressors and the like, even fluorescent lighting. Now, it gets a little complicated. Stay with me, we may need beer. Real power, known as active power, performs the real work in a piece of equipment. Reactive power does not perform any useful real work, but is necessary for inductive loads to work. It also takes power away, making it harder for the real power to supply the load. Apparent power is the vector sum of real power and reactive power. Let's attempt an explanation with the help of a pint of beer. If the explanation doesn't work, at least we can drink the beer. When you order a pint of beer, you pay for the entire contents of the glass, the apparent power. What you want is mostly beer, real power, with a little froth on the top, reactive power. If the froth is too big, as with this pint, then there's less beer in the glass, but you're still paying the same price. A little froth is, of course, fine. In fact, it's necessary. Now, it's similar with reactive power. While it's OK for a little to be there, if there's too much, then the consumer will be paying for it in reactive power charges or penalties. Power factor is the ratio of the active power to apparent power and is used as an indication of how efficiently power is being delivered to the loads in an industrial or commercial site. A power factor of one is ideal, but almost impossible. It's like a beer with no froth. A power factor of 0.95 is generally accepted as being as good as you can get and something to aim for. And this would be a beer with a perfect amount of froth on it. Now, to achieve this, Power factor correction, or PFC units, are connected to the installation. In its simplest form, this consists of a selection of capacitors of calculated values that automatically switch in and out as changes in the operating load require. The capacitance basically counteracts the effects of the inductance in the load. With modern equipment, it's not quite as simple as that, due to the needs to consider harmonics and other power quality issues caused by non-linear loads, and we'll touch on these later. Either way, there are two common issues that result in 50% of UK industries having inadequate power factor correction today. Firstly, PFC equipment calculated to suit the loads in the business at a point in time may no longer be appropriate as time passes. This is mostly due to new equipment being added and old equipment being decommissioned. And secondly, and perhaps more significantly, the capacitors in power factor correction equipment wear out over time. Since PFC units generally sit out of sight and out of mind, and with much electrical work nowadays being subbed out to contractors, there appears to be an increasing loss of ownership and knowledge of the complete electrical installation by any one person, including power factor levels. Phase imbalance occurs when single phase loads are unevenly balanced across the three phases of an installation. Often, like power factor correction, 
The phase loadings would have been balanced and checked when a facility was first designed, or when the initial installation was performed. But as time passes, it's common for the original loads to be moved or decommissioned, and new single phase loads introduced. Now, if this is done without consideration or knowledge of the load spread across the three phases, then over time, significant imbalance will occur. Heat losses in cables and equipment are proportional to the square of the current using the formula I squared R. Imbalanced phases mean high currents on phases that should be shared better across the others. Phase imbalance also has serious implications for any three-phase motors in an installation. It can cause phase current up to 10 times the percentage voltage imbalance for a fully loaded motor. So a 1% increase in voltage on one phase will potentially cause a corresponding 10% increase in current drawn on that phase by all of the three-phase motors connected to the same installation. Now this not only equates to a 10% increase in energy consumption, but could lead to overheating of the motor windings and shaft vibration, both of which will shorten a motor's life. Harmonics and other power quality issues are the subject of another one of our presentations. So here, we'll just consider their effects on the electrical efficiency of an installation. Harmonic currents are generated by non-linear loads like variable speed motor drives, LED lighting, IT equipment, UPS systems, and solar PV inverters, to name just a few. Harmonics create all sorts of problems in an installation. But with regards to energy efficiency, will at the least create increased internal energy losses in connected equipment. Resistive heating is proportional to the square of the harmonic order. So it also follows that the greater the number of higher order harmonics that exist, the greater the heating effect. And this transposes into increased energy consumption and reduced equipment life. Now, as with all the energy efficiency issues discussed so far, the effects of harmonics can be mitigated in various ways, but you need to measure them first. So, having highlighted a variety of potential energy efficiency issues, the next step is to see what's actually happening in your installation. Or if you're a contractor offering energy logging and efficiency improvements as a service, what's happening in your client's installation? And the best way to know that information is with a power and energy logger. This will allow measurement and, more importantly, logging over time of three-phase currents and voltages with automatic calculation of power factor and measurement of harmonics up to the 50th order. Simply connect it to different pieces of equipment or machinery or even whole circuits and leave it logging for a while. The electrical consumption of equipment and machines can be compared against rating plates to look for degradation over time and against the specifications of new replacement items for increased savings. Measurement over days or even weeks of individual circuits will identify the costs of out-of-hours electricity use and enable savings calculations to be made. These can then be used for the justification of equipment upgrades, like moving to LED lighting, for example. A good way to start the journey to improved energy efficiency would be to log the usage of the site as a whole over, say, a week, and then home in on problem areas by subsequently logging individual circuits. Connection is non-intrusive, and assuming the operator is qualified for live working, there is probably no need to turn the power off at any stage. Current measurement coils simply loop around cables. Voltage leads can be clipped onto conductors, or magnetic probes used for easy connection to MCB screw heads. It's easy to set up and monitor results using the free app. And logged measurement data can be downloaded via USB cable or directly from the SD card for analysis on a PC using the included reporting software. If it's your business, when you're finished analyzing the installation and its contents, you can semi-permanently connect the power up at the incomer and plug it into the IT network. And from that point on, live data will be continuously monitored. This will immediately highlight any new issues with power factor, phase balance, harmonics, 
and ongoing electrical consumption in and out of hours. Now, if further investigation of any item is required in the future, the Pell can be disconnected from the incoming supply, used to temporarily monitor the item or circuit, and then reconnected at the origin afterwards. This is arguably a better solution than fixed monitoring equipment, as there's no holes to cut or any need to turn the power off for installation, and the Pell can be moved around as required. If you're an electrical contractor, there is a great opportunity to offer services to business owners who want the green credentials and to save money based around efficiency measurement, but don't know what to do. You can offer the lot. Energy logging over time, power factor measurement, phase balance measurement, harmonic analysis, or a complete energy efficiency logging service. Chauvin Our New UK are here to help. We've created a media channel at CAUK TV. There you'll find a series of how-to videos that show you how to set up the Pell, how to connect it to an installation or piece of equipment, how to start a logging session, how to download results from the Pell, and how to use the app. There are also more than 20 technical articles and a white paper detailing various aspects of energy efficiency and power quality. And if you need more help, our staff and business partners are always there to provide personal support. So if you're a business owner or the manager of a facility or campus and ready to reduce your electrical consumption and carbon emissions while making significant financial savings, or if you're an electrical contractor and ready to add a lucrative new service helping businesses reduce electrical consumption and carbon emissions, take the first step now by visiting CAUK TV. Alternatively, contact us directly on info at caUK.tv or call us on 01924 460 494. See you soon.